Hello, everyone. How are you? Good, good. Ready to start. Um, Hi. Hi, Andy. How are you? Yeah, this is amazing. I was asking to a guy uh, who is watching from the phone because it seems uh, when two people talking, right. like me and you, those who are watching from the phone can see only one person. And guys, are watching from the phone this is true you see now only one person talking or two people can you please write something in the chat because we don't know oh, how it works people. for okay, the people okay. who, are, uh, who are watching from hola, the phones hola. and we need to understand it two okay only one yeah 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 so only one person uh, for those who are watching from the phone then i will be switching off i will just make the brief introduction now and then i will give you all the speech and you will speak and maybe somewhere in between i will appear for like one second so guys first of all let's check the sound and the video please uh, put uh, in the chat like you see us and you can hear us uh, okay. or in case you have any uh, problem so i see paulina cannot see nobody like nobody. maybe uh, yeah, it seems um, paulina it seems that it's in, on your part please check maybe your connection and everything so uh, hi everyone my name is nadia uh, Nadia Kord, and I'm the curator of uh, the International Master Program Prototype in Future Cities in the High School of Economics. And now we are conducting this series of webinars with our students and with the graduates and with the tutors of the program who share the experience of studying, of living in Moscow, who will share the information about the projects and uh, all the interesting stories that they have behind this uh, study, but also the like world life process. And um, mm, we do this series of webinars because recently we've launched an international uh, global scholarship competition. And uh, we really encourage all of you in case you would like to apply for the master program to participate in this competition. My colleague Valeria will share with you the link to the competition now in the chat. And after the webinar, you can visit the web page in case you haven't uh, done it before. And um, uh, so this competition, this is totally online competition that will take place on 26th of April. And uh, it, you will have 24 hours to complete the task. And those people who will win or who, who will be the best in the competition will get 20, uh, 30 and 50 percent scholarships and discounts to study at the master program here in Moscow. So really uh, encourage you and invite you to participate in this competition. And uh, I would like to present uh, Andres who is uh, one of the our international tutors, but, uh, not tutors yet, but students <laughs> for the moment, maybe in the future tutor. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of our students at the International Master Program Prototype in Future Cities. Andres came from Mexico and now he uh, quite quite an interesting background and a mix of uh, competences, mix of stories that he will share today with you. And I think that his story and his way of how he came to Moscow, how he decided to study at the program, will inspire you also to change something, to do something, maybe to move in another country because it's always a new and great experience. So um, I think that you will have a quite fruitful and interesting discussion today. And I still, I will be also here in the chat and maybe I will appear for a minute, maybe somewhere in between and in the end. But in general, you are um, uh, really not just allowed, but you're welcome to ask, to ask questions in the chat and we will try to answer them um, like during this uh, uh, during this webinar so today we have not just the lecture but we are trying always to do it more in a way of a dialogue and in a way of discussion so please ask any question and we, we will answer in the chat so welcome andres to our show <laughs> and let's <laughs> start and i will switch up <laughs> okay so um let's start with this webinar um well as the title uh, itself says so. Uh, it's about urban studies in Moscow and personally and functionally talking about my, my story. And um, by this I would like to, to, to tell my story in a really, uh, in a way that I can encourage people to, to do the same as I, I'm doing. 
and to encourage people to come here to Moscow because it's a good good experience. Uh, so first of all, before we start, I really would like to see who's in the audience. So maybe you can tell me more about about yourself, like really briefly, like where where do you come from or what do you do for a living, like what kind of profession? Um, I I I. I I, I, um, I will be reading you. Okay, so we have a linguistic from Russia. What else? Okay, Mexican, finance. Okay, Uzbekistan, law. Amazing. That's, that's great. Uh, U.S., international affairs. Okay, business in Moscow. Okay, Kazakhstan. Wow, Austria, translation. Um, Moscow, urban design. Mexican, engineer. Okay, Russia. Okay, so that's amazing because that's, that's the aim of this webinar, that we have bunch of nationalities and bunch of uh, professions and approaches because this is this is what the webinar and the story is about so um, let's start also um, I want you to, Im to invite you that um, I'm gonna show you some questions that I would invite you to uh, have in mind during the whole webinar and maybe at, after this we can uh, have a, a discussion at the end okay so the first question would be what's urbanism for you and maybe you can write it in one phrase or maybe in, in three words, what's urbanism for you? And that would be really interesting to, to see what, um, what kind of feedback I can get from you. <clears throat> okay, so let's start. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna talk, uh, I'm gonna divide this into what is my, my story, what brings me here, what, what brought me here, and then like uh, about myself, like what am I doing here? And then uh, more about the university. So I really invite you, if you have any inquire or any question, just uh, put it here and I can read it. And as soon as possible, I will uh, address it in the, in the proper way, okay? So to make this more interactive and not uh, just one single uh, way of communication, that would be really interesting to, to interact with each other. So uh, talking about me, well, this is really, really, really complicated because uh, it's complicated when, when people ask you to, to talk about yourself, right? So I'm going to try to do it in the proper way, and, and trust me, I'm going to do it 100% uh, with the truth. Um, so first of all, um, well, I'm Andres Gomez. As Nadia introduced me, I'm a, a person from Mexico, I'm Mexican. But um, as a person, I can define myself into uh, three stages or three main, let's say, characters. Uh, the first of all would be as an engineer, because as bachelor, uh, as my bachelor, I uh, am an engineer, civil engineer from uh, Instituto Politecnico Nacional from Mexico City. Um, but um, when I was studying this, um, as, uh, as studying for being an engineer, I realized that uh, I, I felt. Uh, not complete and I needed to explore something more and that uh, life was not only about calculation and precise or exact sciences and then that's why I decided to explore my passion which uh, since I was young I really was interested into drawing and creating something and also uh, I was always interested into uh, leaving something from me to other people so then uh, I decided I could I could be something uh, interesting i don't know maybe a tattoo artist so then that's why i i decided to uh, explore this field which is the artistic field to explore creative um, solutions not only engineering one right um i was doing this i was developing this um skill or disability uh, along my education as an engineer but then after some years i um i realized that um, I needed something even bigger where I can achieve for bigger um, bigger goals or bigger achievements and where I can make a major impact in society and maybe in the world. And then I realized that if I needed to do this, I needed to do it in a way where I can mix both things, like the artistic way and the engineerical, and both producing solutions. So then that's why I... I I look, I look up to uh, develop myself as an urban planner because uh, it's a really good opportunity to develop uh, things for people and also uh, solving problematics not only with creativity but also with exact um, procedures. So that's why I, I, I enroll myself in this trip of being an urban planner. Um, 
And why Russia? Why Moscow? Like a lot of people have uh, told me and plenty of my friends in Mexico, they told me like, why you go to Moscow? Why you go to Russia? It's so far away. You don't even speak the language. You don't even know the, the culture. You're, you're going to die probably. And maybe, yeah, it was quite, uh, quite frightening in the beginning. But um, I think this picture can relate or can um, not relate, but can express what, what, I, what I was felt attracted for, for Russia, which is um, I always look at Russian people like they are really, really smart. They are really, really interesting and they can provide with a lot of things in terms of solution and engineering uh, background um, stuff. So uh, since I was young, I was always looking at uh, these movies where... Uh, the astronauts and cosmonauts were uh, highlighted and also every year in new year uh, i saw these um, beautiful buildings from moscow city and people uh, broadcasting there for for giving uh, you know like saying hey happy new year and that was also part of my dream right and indeed uh, when i came to moscow i realized that moscow yeah looked like in the like in the movies or looked like in the in the uh, news uh, programs, so it was really beautiful and amazing. It was almost impossible not to fall in love with the city itself. But also, I realized that there was something else going on, something uh, really interesting that be, uh, behind these um, these um, super antique and uh, interesting in terms of history, uh, like buildings, there was something on uh, going on in the in the meantime, which which is what also really attracted, which is this part of technology, and this part of prototyping something. And I was willing to to know what was this about. So then, um, I think I faced uh, one of these questions. That is, remember I told you that I, I was going to ask you to think further and have this in mind. Well, this was the first question that uh, came to me in, in at the time of uh, choosing what was going to be next in my life, which was uh, starting a master's degree. And in this case was what I was looking for. And like I said before, I was looking for something that allowed me to create bigger solutions, to create solutions of impact, but also I was looking for something that uh, can allow me to explore more, more skills or that can allow me to, to prove myself and to create in myself bigger challenges. And that was really complicated. And that's why it took me a, a long time to, to figure out where I was going to settle down and, and studying a master. So then um, I'm going to start telling you uh, why I choose Moscow and why for me Moscow is really, really important in terms of urbanism and urban development. Well, first of all, uh, I decided to study my master's in urban planning uh, here in the Shukhov lab, which is a really, really, really interesting platform because it's not only a laboratory, but it's, let's call it a, a whole platform that um, where you can, you can find not only... Uh, Academical resources, but also physical resources, as as is in the as it is in the in the name, a lab. Uh, it allows you to explore different uh, things to create uh, different material outcomings out of uh, what you you have in your head, which was really interesting for me. And uh, yeah, I mean, just look for the for the image. It's a really really nice place, and besides, the people over there was uh, really really interesting. And I realized that I was not the only one alone with uh, like kind of like this mix of backgrounds and kind of not looking for doing things in the most orthodox way, but uh, there were more like me, let's say. And that was really encouraging for me. I, I really w wanted to come here and meet these people as soon as possible. And yeah, indeed, as I mentioned, the opportunities that the lab can bring uh, can give to the to the students are are really really interesting. For example, the lab can provide with uh, interesting uh, seminars for for people. The lab can provide also with interesting lectures. And um, for example, in this one, um, oh, I think we have a problem here with the outlining like the title, but okay, I, I can describe it. So this one, we we were uh, attending a. Uh, a, a seminar, um, a lecture with architect uh, Daniel V. Hayden in Copenhagen, uh, where he was giving, uh, giving us his approach at the time of urban planning, because Copenhagen is really, really interesting at the time of urban development and making cities for, for people. 
And here also we have the opportunity to, to visit this. I only have seen this in pictures, which is the uh, ARC facility that uh, turns uh, trash into resources, which is also really interesting. Imagine a uh, burning thing and creating uh, solutions for people. That's also amazing. And I only had seen this uh, in pictures and I had the opportunity not just to see this image by myself, but go inside and explore what was going on, the procedure, and having been surrounded, surrounded by experts who were able to tell me how this uh, thing worked and inspire me more and more. And that's, uh, that's, that this is a crucial point. Like, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, not, it's not only about the physical facilities and it's not only about the, the resources, material resources that you can have in order to launch something, on, in order to create something, but it's about the quality or, and the, the time you invest in, in, willing to, in willing for this to happen. So it's also, um, it's, a, it's a way of acquiring knowledge by, by doing, but also by desiring. The more you decide, the more you desire things, and the more you want to to create things, that's uh, that's the amount of uh, or how would you say it? Uh, that's going to be the result that you're going to have uh, when you when you create something. And that's uh, here. I I want to to read you again, and I want to make a quick pause. Um, I want to to invite you to imagine. Imagine you can you can create something, something that can create a major impact in community or in the world or in your neighborhood or in your house. What it would be like? Uh, tell me more. Like write me briefly. What 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 would you like to 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 create? Maybe you have some crazy ideas, which is also part of the thing to understand what what's inside uh, uh, inside. Um, people's mind, but I mean, I'm really interested that we have several backgrounds here, so we can have several perspectives. So come on, bring it on. Just, uh, you can write something in the chat and that would be really interesting. We can address it like, a, okay, ecological projects, that's amazing. That's that's crazy. Um, amazing. Create a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> okay. We can give some, like, couple of, uh, like, one minute maybe for answer this question while uh, guys are uh, typing the projects. So I think the question that you are addressing, like, why you choose and how you choose the education that you need, this is really crucial. And I think we need to uh, come back to this que question uh, in the end of the discussion, because actually this is the decision that you take and that brings you to two years of your life. Um, um, if you take, for yeah. example, a master degree, yeah? And uh, many people, as I see being a curator of the program, choose ma master programs uh, not so conscious, I would say, because there is this path that you have to take a master because like bachelor, this is not super complete education. And many people just take it because they take it and they follow the previous path of development. Uh, and the interesting thing with the master program is that you can change your track. Uh, for example, being an architect, you can become an urban planner, or being a lawyer or engineer, you can become an artist, I would, I would say, yeah? So interesting thing with the master that you can change your career development and you can expand the knowledge and expand the competences that you have. Um, and uh, really to think before coming to the program, what you really want and where you would like to move, this is a such, uh, actually this is a such difficult thing to think about, but so important. Yeah, so sorry for interfering, but I think I took no, no, like maybe fine. half a minute and guys had time no, to no, think. <laughs> yeah, and Great. you can comment. So Thank you, Nadia. And um, well, it's really interesting that uh, most of you are talking about, like, uh, for example, ecological projects, or maybe some of you are uh, talking about um, creating a product, or some of you are taking more uh, about projects with social character, or some of you are talking about more maybe methodology. So, uh, innovative solutions that make uh, cities resilient and, uh, you know, like eco-friendly at the time of uh, developing, which is really interesting and which is really, really, it goes with, with the next part of the, of the, of the talking. So, um, by me coming here to the Shukhov lab, I was required to start doing this, start uh, doing by making and start um, 
prototyping my craziest ideas and start uh, shaping my, my, my ideas, the ideas I have in mind. And some of them were, I thought they were crazy or, or they could even look stupid. I don't know, but it was a time for, for, for this, like to start doing something. So, um, so yeah, uh, well, I mean, what would you create? You already gave us the answer. Well, so part of my first project was to create something for, for people. Uh, to create part of being uh, part of urbanism is uh, create cities that are more engaging with people that uh, can be inclusive. So this is a thing that uh, me and my team for Labrador project we thought about, and we also uh, want to dignify the city in order for for others to to make use as well of of, of this uh, platform or, or for this. Uh, uh, infrastructure which is called city and that's why we we understood that there was a sector that was not exploring was not uh, giving the correct it was not addressing the proper way here in Moscow um, or it could be even more um, developed which which is uh, people with uh, visual impairments so that's why we decided to create the Labrador um, which is uh, a, a can assistant a cane assistant that uh, would at some point try to emulate uh, having one, one uh, you know, like uh, a guidance dog. That's why we call it Labrador. So basically it's kind of uh, having your own GPS and that could lead you anywhere, uh, even though you have this kind of impairments, right? So it was really, really interesting because we address the, we address urbanism not as a, as a city scale, but more into a personal scale that, um, could um, as as personal scale could impact um, also in the city scale, you know, by by multiplying one for another. <clears throat> so uh, then, after this, I continue uh, developing pro um, projects, and this is one uh, that is one of the recent, most recent ones, which is called Verde City, uh, and this is really interesting because. Um, I, I create this project not by myself, but uh, in assistance or in um, with, with someone else, let's say. And uh, this person has nothing to be with being urban planner or has nothing to be with being an engineer. Indeed, uh, this person uh, has more to be with linguistic and how people understand things and how people interpret language, which also was really interesting uh, because sometimes uh, it's not only developing um, projects for the city and for the people, but also how you communicate them and how you make the project engage with the people and how you make uh, this interaction between people and project. That's really interesting. So I had a different approach and we, um, we create this solution, which is uh, from, from, the, from the household um, residual um, organic matter. Uh, we can collect it and create uh, then a composted fertilizer material. It can be used and it can be improved for uh, city gardening and can be uh, used even for urban farming because it's something that is being explored nowadays and that sometimes people left behind the the the, the farming scale and the, sorry the the farming layer, uh, which is really interesting. Um, so <clears throat> this precise uh, project was interesting because at the beginning I, I, I talked to, to um, my, my colleague in this project and then I said, you know, actually I think it's not really innovative, I think it's uh, kind of vague, I think it's kind of uh, non-interesting. And then uh, we decided, okay, we need to prove it. And then we prove it and then we send this into a uh, competition for, made by Schneider Electrics. And the thing is like, uh, even though I thought it was super um, not successful idea, well, we managed to win something, and we did it to the to the final stage for the CIS regionals uh, uh, of the competitors. We 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 made it. I mean, we couldn't go further, unfortunately. But the thing is, like, we managed to to tell people, okay, we're doing something, and and by people um, like giving a price to it, it's also telling you that it has at some point some sort of value, which is really important. And as part of, uh, as part of the opportunities that the platform of Shuhoff Lab can, can provide to students, 
are um, things that may not be in the curriculum, but also they are not all they are not close. I mean, um, the the platform itself invites you to to take part of it. And I want to to show this one. This one is a, a really interesting story, which is the uh, the the mission that was created for the Shenzhen Vice City Biennale. Uh, my, by the go, by the Moscow government, and they invited us to 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 create um, our perspective of how we uh, conceive Moscow in the 2050, the year 2050, which was amazing. And for example, here uh, I also want to recognize that one of my friends, uh, he's also from Mexico, architect Markovich Pablo. Um, he was always into being a curator. He was always, that, that was part of his dream, uh, part of uh, uh, creating um, these architectural and organizing these kind of uh, events, right? And here in the lab, he had the opportunity to orchestrate, like uh, to put together all these pieces, to put together several people. Okay, you're an engineer, you're an economist, you're a psychologist, you are, uh, you're, uh, you, you're an artist, you are, you have ideas it doesn't matter so just come together and let's put let's pull something together and this was the result our our um our project was exhibited in china in shenzhen which is is amazing and uh, as part of my contribution to to this project the shenzhen Biennale, uh i i had the fortune to work uh, in something related of uh, related of my field, which is uh, the urban farming, and which interested interesting me uh, nowadays, which is uh, how to de develop um, more resilient cities and how to approach and how to address properly this urban inner uh, food production. And the thing is, like the result was creating uh, a floating facility that could be not only for, for growing goods, but also for, for leisure, and that could bring something innovative to the city, and uh, creating some um, kind of facilities that were uh, friendly with the environment, and they have like a positive and not a negative impact on the, on the environment. And this was the result. The project is called uh, River Grass. And I was working along with, uh, Two architects and they this these guys are amazing I had the opportunity to work with uh, architect Alec Cheria and architect Irina Talivova both of them are really talented and even though they are not uh, masters or PhD students they are bachelor students they also um, are proving that uh, there is this talent and there is this lust for people for doing something better that can contribute and can uh, create a major impact um, in in the in the in the world, which was amazing. And why not? I mean, uh, also as part of what what I was saying is that um, even though your ideas could sound really really boring or not interesting or really absurd, uh, the platform uh, of the Shukhov Lab and the platform of the agency itself allows you to to expose them. And for example, this is one one idea, one 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 day that I remember with a, a lot of joy. Uh, I was able to expose my idea of um, how to educate people through gamification, and I give a tiny lecture about it. And I thought, okay, uh, this may sound not interesting or really silly, or maybe just for kids. But indeed, we have a lot of people, and they were engaged, and they were asking questions, and it was really, really, really amazing. Again. Once again, you prove that there are more people that may think the way you do. So now, um, I think uh, I basically cover all what, what I've been doing here, but uh, there's also another part. Uh, it's not only academical part, but, and it's not only um, uh, study parts that are the ones that are inspiring me on my day on day, but there are also other stuff that uh, are in inspiring me uh, to develop different projects, and this is what I'm going to talk about next. And I hope you get engaged and we can have further a discussion on this. Well, first of all, a lot of people just ask me, well, you know, uh, I'm really, really afraid to leave my country because it's starting a, li a new life. I don't know where I'm going to sleep. I don't know how expensive it could, could be to get a place. Uh, I don't know if the neighbors are going to be um, 
if the if the neighbors are going to be really uh, complicated i don't know so the thing is like uh, hsc as a university the higher school of economics provides with uh, really really good facilities for students in order for them to develop uh, in the better conditions so for example this is one proof uh, which is uh, the dormitory it's a really affordable place we're talking about that i pay around uh, 11 dollars per month um, by by being um, here, and I have all the facilities. In the facilities, I have kitchen, I have gym, I have everything that I need uh, in order to develop. And the thing is, it's not only um, a place for um, for sleeping, but it's a place also for interactions, which is going to be part of what I'm going to talk a, a little bit more uh, further in the in the presentation. I'm going to talk about this why interactions and why interacting with several people from all around the world and from different backgrounds can help you to prototype different kind of things. And well, this is also a really beautiful picture because as I mentioned, interesting people. And this, this, this person, it's a really good friend of mine who uh, encouraged me to follow uh, one of my craziest ideas with Labrador and he was a really good supporter. So that's why this is part of the key getting to know people and of course uh, as part of uh, the infrastructure that Moscow has it has one of the best uh, transport system if it's not maybe one of the like yeah like top maybe might be in the second place or the first one I don't know it's really really efficient and with this card the social one the one that looks like a bank card you can access uh, by uh, by paying a monthly a fixed uh, price you can access anytime the transport, which can um, take you from north to south or east to west, any direction, really, really, really fast. And this is also another way of exploring the city. Um, the way to explore the city, uh, there's no way, there's no better way to explore the city than by using its transport and understanding how the dynamic is, what kind of people can you find there, the shadows and where can you get from point B to point A and discovering? This is part of discovering the city. So thank you very much to the HSC for providing this that allowed me to explore the city. And this is not some kind of propaganda. Indeed, I really enjoy it. And the other one, it's the, <clears throat> the, student, uh, the student card. This is really, really, really nice. Uh, as part of being student, you also have some privileges because it's not only attending lectures and it's not only attending your regular classes and it's not only studying at your room, but it's also part of getting uh, a richer knowledge of the of the city or, or of this of the place where you are developing. So part of this, um, the purpose of this uh, student card is also giving you the opportunity to access cultural uh, resources that can be really useful for you at the time of uh, developing as a, as a professional. So you can access concerts, you can access museums, you can access uh, any kind of event. Uh, sometimes the, the, the prices get get slower and sometimes the prices is like, it's, it's for free. So it's also a good opportunity for, for getting uh, inspiration out of the, what the city can provide you. It's not only studying, but it's looking around. And uh, why not, of course, uh, the university also provides uh, the students with the opportunity or the, or, or the alternative to have different uh, social uh, scenarios, let's say, or different social uh, reunions where you can manage to uh, interact with people from other faculties, people from other parts of the world, or people who were just there hanging around, and they can also be really, uh, they can also provide you with some ideas or provide you with some context. So at some point it's really good at the time of networking. And yeah, why not? Also part, part of the, the things that the city and the university provides is with a lot of opportunities and a lot of uh, uh, scenarios where you can go and walk, like for example, in summertime, you can go and explore forests and explore parks and, and explore, uh, several open spaces and have a walk then understand the city in a better way and also during winter even though the the conditions are not really good there are also things that are happening and you can explore uh several uh, other alternatives in my case i explore snowboard for the first time and i think it's going to be the last one because otherwise i can break something but i mean it was also really interesting um 
uh, it was really, really interesting um, activity. So uh, just we're coming to the end of this presentation almost, and I want to, to give you something. It's not only talking about me or talking about the university or talking about the, uh, this kind of thing that may sound like a propaganda, which is not, but it's giving you something that could encourage you to follow your dreams, encourage you to, to look for something bigger. So first of all, we have to understand that there is not such a magic recipe. So there is not uh, step one, two, three, and four. No, it, that's, that doesn't exist. Uh, what you have to understand is that it's not quantitative. It's not that I invest one hour of, of studying, one hour of prototyping, and I receive one hour as a result, hour of something. No, no, no. It's uh, more qualitative. The more effort and the more um, the more uh, heart you can put in your projects, that's that's uh, where, where you're going to see the results indeed. And well, second, you have to be patient and dedicated because sometimes you know you deal with failure, things doesn't go good, but you know you have to be stick patient and be dedicated and uh, continue doing the same thing, iterating one and over and over again till you get the, the results that you that you would like to have. That's that's a really, really uh, a cool and key fact that I can uh, provide to you. And maybe it's quite uh, axiomatic or obvious, but I mean, someone needed to tell you that. And next one, of course, stop thinking and start doing. Sometimes we think too much and sometimes the more we think, the more boundaries we put. But it's more about doing. And the more you start doing, the more you realize what you are capable of. And the more you do, you realize that you are able to develop several skills. And the more you do, you realize that the more adaptable you are, the more, um, like, yeah, the more adaptable you, you are as a person, as a professional, as a as human being. And for, I told you, um, it's really important, create a network. Um, yeah, everyone loves to go out and meet with friends or go out partying, but also this could be a really, really interesting tool that maybe uh, they don't teach us at school. And the thing is like, part of getting your contacts, part of getting to know people who may present you an opportunity is going out, socialize, talk to people, create a network, that's why I told you, for me, dormitory, for me, um, sometimes these social events represented uh, an alternative to meet new people that can uh, give me with alternatives or that can help me to develop my craziest ideas because sometimes I'm not able to, to do something, but then I realize that I know someone who may help me. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a symbiosis and it's really, 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 really nice. I really encourage you to do this. And uh, the fifth one would be, be open to new knowledge. Like sometimes we, we think and we're too stubborn and we say, okay, you know, I know too much. I think I'm the master of this, so I'm not gonna learn anymore. That's false, you have to continue. The more you push yourself and the more you train yourself to get new knowledge, the more adaptable and the better personal professional you also become. And uh, well, just to final, uh, finalize and maybe have a discussion here, I would like to ask you, what stops you from studying abroad? And what, um, what encourages you to, to study abroad? So these are the two polarities. So I really would like you to, to, to read your answers and tell me about, about this. That, that would be really, really interesting. Okay, quality of education. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a crucial thing. Is uh, it's not that we are just going to the first option and then we realize that it's not uh, the um, it's it's not it was not the more suitable for us. But we we couldn't go further because we we were lazy or we didn't want to continue with this process of looking for better options of, for for ourselves. Um, okay, opportunities of, of finishing studies. Okay, stop financial financial reasons. Yeah, that's uh, one of the main ones. Um, 
exploring new cultures well that that's also a really like a plus one like uh, i i really encourage you to to go abroad because you're gonna explore different cultures and they are gonna uh embrace your panorama and giving you several different perspectives uh financial reasons okay and mentality frames okay yeah that's uh it self boundaries are the hardest to to get rid of and yeah of course opportunities after finishing studies yeah i think like everyone that's one of the biggest fears but i mean uh i think at some point it's part of life like we have to face this kind of um tension this this part of uh we have to feel this uh deception to to understand that we can do better and to understand that we we can translate these bad opportunities into into something better something that can um, be helpful for, for, for all for all for all of us hi andres i'm back so uh, you know thanks a lot for the amazing speech you did and for sharing the experience because i know that it's always not so like easy to share your life experience yeah and you did this really great presentation about your projects and about uh, your like inspirations i have like one question that i'm really interested and in, uh, maybe for some guys it will be also interesting by the way we start the question and answer section so you can put any question uh, in the chat and uh, andres or me we will try to answer you so don't be shy again you can answer whatever you want uh, but first, I would like to ask you, what was the most difficult for you after you moved to Moscow? Like, what was the really tough thing for you? Do you remember something special or it was everything like more or less okay and was everything comfortable and yeah, yeah. funny? <laughs> well, I mean, I would like to say that everything was like a fairy tale, but it wasn't. I mean, I, I, I realized that um, being in a foreign country, uh, yeah, it represented a lot of opportunities, but also it represented me that every failure I did uh, was more obvious because I was the one that it was not matching with the culture. So it was going to be more obvious that I'm, I was the one that was making mistakes. And it's really it's really hard to, to make mistakes and not having uh, your closest ones to encourage you to, you know, like, uh, to take care of you during this process of feeling bad because you you fail a lot of times. So I think that was really, really complicated for me, not having my family, not having my, my, my dad physically that could give me a hug or could, could give me a kiss or could tell me, yeah. you know, everything's going to be fine, even though I knew it was going to be. But it was really complicated. And uh, I think that was one of the, the things that uh, actually strike me. But... I think uh, it's just about overcoming these these kind of situations that are going to be happening ever. Doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. Right. You you have to go out of your comfort yeah. zone sometimes, at least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like moving to another country, this is actually a quite big uh, step out of comfort zone. Yeah, which makes you, I think, which makes you stronger and which makes you more open-minded. And I think this. Uh, opportunity to move to another place to live for a while this is really opens uh, sometimes a nice to your own like country and to place where you live what's really is amazing about this place and what's maybe not so great and how you can improve this place and uh, move into another place this is a really a great opportunity to expand your horizons and to expand your outlook yeah exactly uh, I don't know. yeah maybe yeah, so you can you can start asking the questions. Yeah, we will start answering the questions like in one minute. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. For example, Sorry, this one is really interesting. Can can international students in Russia work after their studies, like in USA, UK, and other countries? Yeah, of course they can, and that's that's one of the things. Like having a, a master with an international value can open you several gates, not only the ones in Russia, but uh, may, maybe some gates in your own country, and for sure, why not in in several of them. That's why the, the community here in, in, in the university and the program, it's quite, quite big in order to, uh, to make you understand that there are people from all around the world having the same goal and that the opportunities are, are, are open for, for this. So, yeah, it's, it's a yes. And can I find my way? Into yeah. My yeah. Sure. sure, sure. Go, go ahead. Can I add? Yeah. Can I add? So this question about uh, can uh, international students in Russia work than in, in USA or UK? So there are some um, some jobs 
uh, like for example engineer or an architect or for example a doctor that in specific countries requires local uh, education and for, for example when you're coming to the united states even with a, being a super doctor uh, you cannot start working without the local license and uh, in some countries some european countries for example to work as an architect or to work as an engineer uh, no matter from where you are, you need to have a local like license. But in case you are uh, like experienced professional, you will pass these exams like it's not so difficult. Uh, but in general, uh, I think nowadays uh, it doesn't. Um, I would say it doesn't the diploma itself it doesn't uh, it's, it's not important so much what is mu much more important is the network where you are and when you are choosing the program you should look for a community uh, where you will feel comfortable with your ideas where you can expand your ideas expand your knowledge and uh, meet new people and make the network that will be useful for you in a professional way and for example um, here at the master program what we are trying to do is to provide connections with the um, uh, European experts like for example uh, in this trip that Andres was talking about and uh, in the trip to Copenhagen we were meeting with the leading experts um, leading urban planners in the world, like um, like uh, the office of Bjarke Engels, like Dyson and Whiteley's office, and Jan Gale, who are the quite important figures in the world, and uh, those who are interested to continue collaboration in these companies or with these people, they are like uh, they are welcome to share their contacts, to go to the internships. For example, one of our students went to the United Nations internship before, so. Um, I would recommend you to look for network and to look for a community of people open-minded and where you can make the connections for your future and uh, of course here in moscow being a quite european city you can find a lot of opportunities to do this and uh, lots depends on you and how you build this network as andres already said yeah and before maybe before we uh, finish with this I, I, there is a really interesting one uh, question. It doesn't mean that the rest are not, but I mean, this one is one of the, the ones that people uh, like oftenly ask. Uh, so many urban projects, oh, I lost it. Many urban projects require money. How would you solve this problem, investors or the city budget? Uh, the thing is like, yeah, uh, sometimes we as um, urban planners, engineers or architects, we rely a lot in uh, the city budget or in investors budget but sometimes we have to explore all the other alternatives for example crowdfunding sometimes the power of the community it's uh, even bigger and have a has a bigger impact than the power of the state or the power of a, a rich investors so i would suggest to explore this alternative sometimes community can be really 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 uh, a solution for 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 developing these projects and Daniela was asking, uh, may I know how this program has helped you with your future plans? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's really interesting because... Uh, about your future being a graduate now, yeah, being like closer to graduation. Well, I mean, uh, it has opened me more uh, opportunities in the sense uh, that I cannot develop myself only as an engineer or as an urban planner. I can, I can try to do both or I can uh, look for... Uh, better job positions but also i think it had it had given me the understanding of how to develop something a personal project and how to work for it so i think that would be one of the most valuable things how i can start something by my own so yeah it has it has helped it has opened me like several several things and i think our time is running out because there was another seminar yeah but there are a couple of questions yeah there are like um uh, two more questions uh, let's answer them quickly just not to keep people yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, there were one question about uh discrimination in russia have you ever faced it yes or uh, no? i think discrimination has no nationality it's all around the world but thanks <laughs> uh, i haven't i haven't uh, fortunately yeah so um do you have time to rest while you study how the program how much the program is demanding well like i said uh 
you can even have a really demanding program and you can continue resting as you have nothing. So it's up to you. And for me, I try to make it balanced. Sometimes I, I seen that I uh, rest too much, but yeah, I mean, it's up to you. So there is time, there is time. Time is something that is gonna be like infinity uh, of time. And there, uh, um, if there will be similar program in Latin America, what would be the income student profile? Uh, I don't get much the question. I don't know. Maybe you get it. There will be. Uh, well, uh, about the student's profile, I, I would say that uh, well, there must be some kind of scheme, like professional one. But I would rather invite that uh, there not there there should be no limitation about like you being an engineer or you being uh, an architect but more to be more uh, for you to have uh, this uh, lust for exploring uh, this urban sphere so in the program we have several backgrounds we have economists we have uh, mathematicians we have plenty of them not only uh, uh, shape profile like you have to be architect or engineer so the program is open to to new perspective to to, to think outside the box so that would be my answer uh ivan rivera okay uh, and uh, Ikchuk Won from Korea is asking, what was the biggest culture shock for you in Russia? <laughs> oh man, uh, I would say the, the language, but uh, right now I'm trying to learn it. And uh, uh, the, uh, the university offers with uh, the platform for students to learn it for free. So right now I'm not 100% fluent on it, but I make myself understand I, and I have managed to survive, so I'm, I can communicate in Russian. Немножко. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Немножко. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, last two questions. Are there any exchange opportunities in this program? I will answer this. The HEC University provides exchange opportunities for all the students, but it depends a lot on your desires, I would say. And there is, uh, we don't have exactly exchange opportunities at the program itself because it's provided by the bigger level from the university. And there are special programs with lots of universities. And in case a student is really dedicated to do this exchange, yes, there are some possibilities. Uh, and is Russian winter very cold? <laughs> uh, well, uh, not this year. No, yeah. uh, this year. Greta was right. And can you survive in Russia without <laughs> the language? Yeah, of course. I think after the the World Cup, uh, especially in Moscow, uh, there there were uh, left a lot of platforms and a lot of uh, infrastructure for for guidance and for making the city more um, friendly with with foreigners who do not understand or do not are not familiarized with with the language. So yeah, the answer is a total yes, yes. So I think, uh, yeah, we're out of time because there are other webinars which will be after this one. Uh, the last thing I would like to share and to um, engage everyone, first of all, to thank Andres. Thanks a lot for sharing your story. This was really an ama amazing. Second thing, uh, I provide the link to the website of the master program prototyping future cities where Andres currently is a second year student. You can visit the web page. At the moment, in case you apply before 20, uh, 15 of April, you can have a discount 20% of your tuition fee. So please apply in case you are interested. Also, my colleague Valeria will share with you all our contacts, social media, and everything. So in case you have any question about educational process, in case you would like to apply for the program of our workshops, we really will be super happy to see you. So thanks a lot. And uh, we hope to see you on Tuesday on the webinar with Pablo Golding, who is going to talk about his experience being a co-curator at the Shenzhen Biennale uh, that we were uh, doing from Shukhaf Lab, from Master Program Prototyping Future Series. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Andrew.